All right. Hello, and welcome to Small Business Success Story, Fueling Your Fire Music Academy. My name is Beth, and I'm a librarian with the Business Technology and Periodicals Department here at Central Library. We would like to encourage all attendees to visit mpl.org to stay connected and view our calendar of events. We also ask you to follow MPL on social media to stay updated on all our programs and services. We are so excited and happy to welcome you to this evening's program. Um, there will be a chance to ask your questions of our presenter, Kaylee Crossfire, at the end of the program. So to be sure to write down your questions and put them in the chat box. Um, my colleague Jill will read them to Kaylee at the end so she can answer all of your burning questions. All right, so a little background on Kaylee. <laughs> Kaylee Crossfire is a globally known musician with over 15 years experience in the music industry. Kaylee has toured throughout the US promoting her music independently and has created an amazing buzz that continues to grow. In 2019, she was the only Wisconsin contestant on Netflix's hit music competition series, Rhythm and Flow with T.I., Cardi B, and Chance the Rapper, where she was selected out of 100,000 applicants. Kaylee Crossfire has, was announced as one of the Bands to Watch 2020 by the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, is a Whammy Awards 2020 nominee, and Shepherd Express Best of Milwaukee Hip Hop winner. Most recently, Kaylee has expanded her career into the acting world, starring in the new 2022 film Untangled alongside Hollywood actor Jamal Woolard. Kaylee's talents measure beyond the scope of entertainment. She is also the founder of the annual Female Takeover Showcase in Milwaukee, as well as owner and founder of Fueling Your Fire Music Academy, both platforms dedicated to building up aspiring musicians in her community. I will now give the floor to Ms. Kaylee Crossfire. I feel like there's some virtual claps going on. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, well, first of all, shout out to Milwaukee Public Library and you, Beth. Thank you for having me. Daryl Land, thank you for connecting us. I ain't forget. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to hop into it. You know, that was a, a really great description of all that I do. And, you know, I definitely want to let everybody know about my journey. Um, you know, where I started, like literally from the beginning, because, you know, that's all the amazing things I've been able to accomplish. But, you know, we all got a journey. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, again, my name is Kaylee Crossfire. Uh, I'm a musician, entrepreneur, and a mentor. Um, if I could just take you guys back to where it all started for me, like the beginning of music and where I fell in love. Um, I would date it back as early as 13 to 14 years old, right? Like I was in this class, it was called world music class. And in the class, the teacher, you know, he had like a whole recording set up, you know, it's, it's a music class. So it was definitely right up my alley. I always loved music. Um, he heard me singing in class all the time. This teacher just used to be on me because like he playing the drums, I'm over here singing and all type of stuff. So one time he invited me and a good friend of mine after school to basically sit back and he wanted to kind of test out this new recording um you know equipment that he had and I'm just like all for it I'm super excited so uh, me and my childhood best friend we recorded uh, my very first song right and I will never forget the way recording that first song made me feel the moment that I played it back and was able to hear myself for the first time I was like what like hold on I don't sound too bad right then I'm starting to like let all my friends hear it and you know that's kind of what started it for me right like now I'm getting acknowledge it, not acknowledgement from my little friends in school telling me you know I got a good voice and everything like that so I really feel like that was like that core when it kind of started so um now at this time now I'm hungry now I'm just like okay let me let me figure out like what else I can get into like what's out here right so I would say at about 15, I entered into, 15 to 16, I entered into my very first talent competition. Now, this was scary. <laughs> this was definitely scary. You know, I'm 16 years old. I have to like hustle up and round up all my family, all my friends, you know, to come out to support. And I still remember the location. It was at the Miramar Theater here, um, put together, you know, by this guy who at the time was doing these, you know, teen showcases. And my very first show, y'all, like, it just did something to my spirit because I won second place. And I rung this to show y'all because I'm so cheesy. But, 
So y'all, this is my, I still have this. And this right here is super sentimental for me because obviously winning second place, that's cool, right? But I would say this was the beginning of where everything really started. Like when I won that competition and it's dated 9-24-06. When I won that first talent competition, like that really like ignited me now because now this was my first time on stage. Like I learned so much in this in this little time, right? Like. I had to learn how to work a stage. Um, and these were in front of people I didn't know, right? So that's how you know if you got something or not. You could tell by the crowd reaction and interaction and, and, and how they're like, you know, drawn into you. And I just remember getting a standing ovation. Um, and at the time I was singing. So I, uh, I initially started off singing um, in my earlier career. So man, they stand up, they gave me a whole standing ovation. And that for me was like amazing. I'm like, what? Like people like, y'all standing up for me? Like, ah. <laughs> you know, I'm excited, right? So from there, we went on to do um, kind of like a second round situation. Like, so the finalists from that round, top three, we go on to perform again. Now, this is the part where I had to grow up quick when it came to business and how people will take advantage of you um, when you're young and you just don't know a lot. So we went you know, for this, you know, second round. And within this process, we all performed. But this promoter, y'all, was like a little janky, okay? He ended up like running off with like everybody money. That man probably still on a run to this day because I don't know what happened. He got into it with somebody, but long story short, he took off with everyone's money. Now I'm young and I'm not knowing any better. All I know is I didn't hustled up and, you know, sold all these tickets, got all my people here. And, you know, we were supposed to win a prize. Like, you know, the uh, winner this time was supposed to win a prize, but obviously that didn't happen. He ran off um, and literally no call, no show. Haven't seen that man, don't know where that man at. But I just remember that feeling of feeling like, dang, like there was nothing I can do about it. You know what I'm saying? There was nothing I can do. So that was the moment that I realized, like I said, that people would definitely take advantage of you. And this was the moment I realized like, now I have to make sure that I'm protecting myself and having some type of formal documentation in place. So learned that super, super early on, y'all. So within that, like I said, there was a lesson in it. So I don't, I don't look at anything in my life that's happened as anything negative. I look at it like a lesson. How am I going to grow from it? So like I said, from there, I knew now I got to get paperwork together. Now I have to have documents in place when people are booking me for things. I have to have a writer, right? I have to have all these things in place. Okay. So now I'm going to fast forward a little bit. That was kind of like my learning lesson. If I could fast forward now, let's, let's get to where I'm grown. Right. So now, now I'm dedicated. Now, I'm like, now I'm like out here on the scene and now I have to learn how to properly brand myself. So that's what I'm doing, right? I'm doing that groundwork. I'm out at events. I'm, you know, you know, meeting people. I'm networking. I'm doing all the things that you're supposed to do as a musician. And in that time, um, initially me coming onto the scene, what I could say about the music scene back in the day when it came to women um, and, and like female rappers and things like that, like I always kind of seen like a sense of, y'all know how they be like y'all know like they always try to kind of like put women against each other right it's always that she got to be better than this person or she can't talk to her or she better or she better it's always someone trying particularly men you know um trying to put women in the industry like against each other right and I kind of seen that kind of firsthand and I never really felt it I never really I don't know that's just not me I, I ain't never really rock with that right so at the time I'm just like okay I see these dope females out here and I'm like, I want to do something different. You know, I want to reach out to these women and see if they will be interested in doing like a collaboration with me. And so at the time, there were about four females on the scene. There was, there was a few more, but there was about four in particular that I really would, just had a drawing to because they were just super, super dope. So that was Kira Princess. <laughs> that was Lady Sabo. Um, that was, um, Remy and then that was young key and it was me. So I had the idea and the concept to get us all together and do a song together. And that song is called female takeover. So with female takeover, that taught me a lot too, right now within that, I had to do so, so much, like there is so much that go into, you know, um, you know, the whole production side of things when you're getting ready to do a video, but 
I'm super young at it. And this is like my second attempt. Okay. So this is my second attempt at doing a music video. What I will, let me go back. So my first attempt of doing a music video, it was a complete failure. So, so let me, let me start there. <laughs> when I say it was a failure, y'all, this was just me being young and not knowing anything, right? Not having anyone to turn to, not having any guidance. When I tell y'all, I literally started on my own and, you know, for the most part still, you know, very much on my own. So when I say that was a failure, it was because I didn't know anything about quality. I didn't have the resources and connections. And I feel like it was a failure, right? And you have to pre appreciate people in your circle who are honest with you. Um, you don't want a lot of yes people in your circle, right? Like you don't want that. You need people who are gonna tell you how it is so that you can grow, right? Because if you don't know, you can't grow. So uh, a person I wanna say I really appreciate when it comes to showing me about marketing and branding myself properly was my photographer, Roche. So I'm, I'm taking it back to the first video real quick and then I'm gonna come back to uh, the other one. But I remember I showed him this music video that I did and his words, I will never forget it. <laughs> this was his way of telling me like, child, hold on, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do this out. Uh, Roche told me, um, if you do not take yourself seriously, nobody will. Yeah, and that was my, <laughs> my way of realizing like, yeah, that video just wasn't the best and it wasn't, right? I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. So from there, um, he actually connected me with a super dope videographer that he had known and had a relationship with um sorry uh, I'm letting somebody in um a super dope relationship with a videographer named Champ Robinson and Champ man Champ was just phenomenal right so I knew the second time around I needed to have this be way better than the first time so that's how me and Champ connected so if I'm taking it back to the second music video when it came down to playing a female takeover music video Champ was my videographer and his quality just super just just a one so me and these ladies got together we did the video and i had to come up with so much right so now this is teaching me about a lot of other business right i had to get all the schedules together i had to get the video treatment down um obviously I had to find a videographer had to find like location scouting like all these things that i had to do that had so much planning required in it but you know what it was like something that i needed to learn right it was something that i needed to do and um when i tell y'all the ladies absolutely killed it when it came to that uh female takeover was a phenomenal um thing for the city of Milwaukee because it had never been done before and no one had ever seen you know women come together and unite and really just like show off the talent and the skill that we had like the video pretty much went viral and I think it's to this day still one of my highest um viewed videos um on YouTube you know so y'all can check that out I think it has about a hundred and like close to a hundred and twenty thousand so that was like 10 years ago you know what i'm saying so even today that's still good but you know for that to occur and just the love and support you know that we got in the community for doing that was just an amazing thing you know um and all these ladies are still very much out here and active today but for me that was the start of something because um just having the city support us the way they did when we did that like we just knew we had something so from there, I, you know, I wanted to figure out how to keep that going, right? Because it was such an amazing thing. And I just realized like the lack of female platforms that we even had at the time. Like when we used to go to these events, it was so male dominated. Like it was so many men there. I didn't feel like there was anything for women in the city of Milwaukee. You know, it, it really wasn't. And so uh, me and one of my, um, you know, fellow musicians, Young Key, who was on the track with me, we came up with the idea to kind of turn the song into an actual showcase. And so that same year, um, I did the very first annual female takeover showcase. And what was so special about that event was two young black girls really just trying to make a difference and like really showcasing all the amazing talent, you know, in the city. So this wasn't, a, we kind of expanded it, right? So it wasn't just musicians because, you know, that's great, but it's so many other dope women, right? Like so many dope business owners we um, incorporated. So we had women setting up their vendor, uh, you know, their vendor tables and things. Um, the DJ, uh, the host, comedian Kelly Kells, you know, she's out here, she, you know, doing her big one, you know, Kelly Kells and been all on um, HBO and everything, you know, Sushi Laura is a DJ for the Bucks now, like, 
so many dope women from the city, um, fashion designers, models, obviously, you know, new and upcoming female musicians. Um, man, like over every time I've done the event, because it now has turned into an annual event, we sell out every year, every year. And that just showed how much it was needed. Like that platform was needed, you know. Um, and, you know, just to see the progress of it, because every year I've watched that platform grow, you know, from the first year being 150 people in the audience to the second year, you know, uh, 200 people in the audience and 300 and 500, just every year getting bigger and bigger. And that for me was an amazing thing, because it, like I said, it just shows us that it was like needed, right? Um, and I'm super proud to announce that Female Takeover is going on its 10 year um, anniversary. So I will be bringing Female Takeover back in 2023. I'm so excited about that. Um, obviously due to COVID, couldn't exactly, uh, you know, have that event going on, but we'll be bringing it back. So I'm super excited about that. Um, so now with all the success that, you know, we were having and, you know, with everything kind of like going on, for me, it was kind of time, right? Like. And when I say it was kind of time, it was between that point where I'm like, I'm, I feel like I was being held back, you know, at my job, my nine to five that I had. Um, I was a CNA, a certified nursing assistant. And uh, for anybody who has been like in the healthcare field, like we know that that industry is super, super demanding. And don't get me wrong. I love what I did. Like I love taking care of people. Like I, I genuinely did, but I just knew I couldn't be able to pursue all that I wanted to pursue while keeping that job. So at some point you have to kind of like sit down and evaluate like where you're trying to go. Like where, where, do you, where do you see yourself being at and like how can you get there? And I personally knew that I couldn't get there by maintaining that job. It just wasn't gonna happen for me. So I made that transition to leave my job and I'm not advising anyone to just cold turkey quit their job. No, I would say have a plan in place um, so that you can transition yourself out. So my transition looked like, you know, going from full-time to part-time to now, you know, um, doing other things to just slowly um, get away from that, you know, full-time position that I had. Now, it was definitely scary. It was definitely something that, you know, I just had to pray on, you know what I mean? And this is just kind of where my faith comes into place because I just knew what I was destined for and I just felt it, you know, um, like in my soul, I just knew that that wasn't my calling. That wasn't my purpose. I knew I was designed for something better. So the moment I just gave it to God and just had that conversation with him and just believing in myself and believing that he has created this, this plan for me, you know, um, it was there. It was, you know, it was my purpose. So I just had to like, as my sis Morgan say, it was time to come out of the waiting room. You know, it's time to step out the waiting room and just like really pursue your dream. So that's what I did. You know, I transitioned out and I did have a lot of barriers too. So not only was it hard to maintain that, you know, job while trying to pursue my career, but then I had other barriers that kind of um, were more demanding at the time. And that at the time, that's my family, right? Um, a lot of people probably don't know this about me, but from the age, I could probably say, 14 is when I really recalled having to give my mom a lot more help, right? Um, my mom was disabled. She had been disabled pretty much as long as I can remember. But at the age of 14, I felt like she required more of my help. So I could, there's no way I could pursue my career, work full-time job. Now it's getting to a point where I have to take care of my mom full-time. It just wasn't going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So definitely left the job to pursue that, but to also help to take care of my mom. So now it's like, okay, cool, taking care of moms, you know, that was definitely a challenge. It was definitely, you know, something that um, I had to figure out a system for, especially when it was time to like start traveling and things like out of town, you know, it was really hard. I had to always like, you know, hit up family to kind of fill in for me as a caretaker, just so that I can go out of town and do the show real quick. You know what I mean? Like I had to make it happen. But then after that occurred, another family situation happened, right? And that family situation was me having to step in and take guardianship over my nephew. So around this time, I'm probably like 21, 22 years old. So I had to pretty much become an instant mom. <laughs> you know, at the time where I'm supposed to be y'all living my best life, partying, kicking it, like doing me. I couldn't do that. I had to like instant mom alert, right? And don't get me wrong. Um, 
it was very challenging, but I felt like everything happens for a reason. And the reason I feel like that was my destiny and, you know, my calling to like become a mom is because that's what really pushed me and motivated me too. Cause now I'm like, well, it's not only me no more I'm worrying about. You know what I'm saying? Now I have a shorty I have to worry about. I have a child that I have to provide for and take care of. So now I'm not out here making the silly choices that I probably would have been making, right? Kicking it and partying and, you know, running in behind men and things like that. Like it was a little different for me, you know? Um, Priorities first, right? So, you know, having that and just kind of, like I said, just, just realizing like what my purpose is I feel like that's when a lot of amazing things then started to happen, right? Because it's God's plan, right? My plan was to do the work, take care of the family and really push my career. And I promise y'all, like the moment that I came out of the waiting room and fell into my purpose is when all the amazing accolades um, that Beth mentioned in the beginning started to happen, you know? Um, I was able to finally tour for the first time. So me and my um, sister, Kia Rap Princess, she was one of the original ladies on the Female Takeover Showcase. We um, collaborated and did a project that was called Best of Both World. You know, y'all go check that out. It's still available on all streaming platforms. Um, we did a project called Best of Both Worlds. And, you know, we wanted to really get out here independently and, you know, showcase ourselves, right? So it was difficult. <laughs> it wasn't easy when you have two people you're taking care of and you have to try to maneuver, but, you know, thank God for, you know, my aunts, you know, because they really came through when it came time for me to like get out of town to do what I need to do, but was able to tour. Um, you know, we ended up winning an award in Atlanta, Georgia for our music video right now. So we won music video of the year. Um, you know, I was able to win Journal Sentinels, you know, Bands to Watch and Shepherd Expresses, you know, best of Milwaukee hip hop artists. Um, not only that, but I was actually uh, one of the recipients um, in the back, it's a, it was a program called Backline MKE. Some of y'all may be familiar with it. It was, you know, they did a few, uh, they did a few years of it, but they were offering recipients a $20,000 grant to help fund your music career. And by the grace of God, <laughs> praise him. <laughs> I was able to receive that grant, y'all. And I literally, I remember getting the phone call and I remember literally dropping down and crying. Seriously, because I'm just like, man, like it's hard. You know, when you're out here pursuing your dreams, Funding is something serious. Like it's definitely something difficult. So, and, you know, being able to get that was just such a blessing for me. Um, and also, you know, um, after that, I feel like all that would happen within the same year. And then after that, um, well, if I can go back to the backline thing, it was something super incredible about that that I ended up finding out about later, right? So a lot of people entered into the competition, you know, or whatever the case was, but I found out later that I was a judge's favorite. And that was interesting to me, right? Because I'm just like, like, what? Right? Like, really? I was a judge's favorite? Like, now I'm nosy. I'm like, well, who was the judges? Like, who, like, who are these people? Like, you know? And so slowly as a, like a year went on or something, you know, they slowly unveiled themselves to me. And the importance of that for me was you have to build relationships with people. You get what I'm saying? And you have to be a, a decent, good person to people too, you know, cause I, I always say people will never forget how you make them feel. They will never forget it, right? So whether your encounters is a good one or a bad one, you know, they're going to remember it. You get what I'm saying? So for the judges to finally unveil themselves and, I, and I'm figuring out who they were and I'm just like, dang, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that's my own girl. Like, oh, okay. You know, these are people in the community that I've built relationships with that really vouch for me in order to get that. So relationship building is also really key because you never know who's going to be in a position to help you, you know? So that was an amazing thing that occurred. And then, like I said, within the same year was the year that I um, got the email about you know wanting to um have me go to Chicago to audition for Rhythm and Flow um which you know was a Netflix competition um you know with Cardi B T.I. and Chance the Rapper so man like all I can say is a lot of these accolades you know really 
really did start to come, but it definitely took a lot of like giving it to God, you know what I mean? And just really putting myself first and really believing in it. So that was like super amazing. Um, so now with, if I could go back now to like female takeover, um, female takeover was, like I said, it was dope because, you know, I was able to assist up and coming musicians, right? That was kind of the start of it for me, where I can say that that's where fueling your fire kind of stemmed from after that. Because how I looked at female takeover was, it was an amazing thing. I was able to help up and coming women work on like their stage presence and things like that. But like I said, that was just an annual event. Um, after that day had occurred or, you know, those months of leading up to the event, but after that was done, then that was done, you know? Um, when I sat and thought about the need of what musicians need, you know, learning firsthand myself what I needed when I was coming up, it was definitely a lot more that went into it um, being a musician, right? So female takeover, I'm sorry, not female takeover, fueling your fire came, you know, from, it's like the baby of female takeover, essentially, because I wanted to figure out a way to develop a program where musicians could come and learn everything there was to know about the music industry. What I had realized about the music industry, even with myself, was there was so much I didn't know about the music business aspect, you know, of the industry, which is the most important part if you really want to be honest, right? We see and hear all the time about how musicians, you know, get played or they lose out on money or they don't own their masters or, you know, someone's taking advantage of them or they're signing 360 deals, you know, or they don't have rights to their publishing, right? Like we hear about all these things that happen to musicians and I feel like it's really because of the education component wasn't ever there, you know? So when talking about wanting to make a change in the community and things, I feel like knowledge is power you know when you know about the industry you're in you're feeling way more confident when you're going into things and you have leverage at this point you're not going in there blinded so with uh fueling your fire academy um some of the things that i pretty much teach the musicians obviously like i said is about the music business so we go over music business one-on-one um, I teach the musicians how to properly market and brand themselves um, because, you know, that's very important as a musician. You know, I had to learn that. We all know I had to learn that <laughs> from the previous stories. Um, I taught the musicians, or I teach the musicians about stage presence, which is very, very important. You know, you have to be able to work a room and, you know, keep a, a crowd captivated with you, right, when you're on stage. Um, and also I offer consulting. Um, just business consulting in general, that's kind of been like a newer um, situation that has occurred recently. I'm actually working with a young lady. She is a author. Um, she, you know, released a book. And so I'm currently now helping her kind of like market herself and get herself out there as well. So that's slowly kind of expanding and opening up. But um, to the wonderful people, um, I want to give JJ Jarrell from Timeless Studios a shout out because I actually hold Feeling Your Fire Music Academy inside of Timeless Studios. When I approached JJ with the, um, why am I calling you JJ? I don't know why I'm calling you JJ <laughs> Jarrell. <laughs> when I uh, reached out to Jarrell about it, you know, he was just super, um, he, he believed in it 100%. And me and him go way back, which is so crazy. Like we always have this expression where we say it's all connected because it is. If y'all pay attention, things are really connected, you know? So me and Jarrell actually go back to middle school too. So that's crazy that we both go back to middle school and now we're where we are now um, in the music industry together, you know? So, but yeah. Um, so also from working with the adults, I've been able to meet so many wonderful, talented uh, adult musicians. And now I just want to talk to them for a second you know, and to any other musicians who may be on or listening or will listen to this later. Um, a few things that I just want to say is y'all are doing amazing. Okay. I want y'all to realize that the things that you guys are achieving, you guys have been able to achieve that so much faster than I've been able to achieve it. Right. Like from getting y'all songs played on radios, y'all out here winning competitions, Y'all out here performing at festivals. Y'all out here getting paid gigs early on in y'all careers. Y'all are doing it. And I want y'all to really absorb that and take it in, right? Because nothing is going to be overnight. Nothing is going to happen super fast. Um, it does for some people, but not all people. You know what I'm saying? This is a long game, right? Like this ain't, we in it for the long haul. So just take it in, y'all. A win is a win. 
<laughs> okay? <laughs> Everything that happens to y'all, celebrate it the wins, the big ones and the small ones, celebrate it. I celebrate everything, child. <laughs> Every single thing that happens, I'm gonna celebrate it. So I just want y'all to know y'all doing phenomenal. I'm proud of y'all. For any musicians who's gonna watch this later, like just keep it up, stay consistent and just go hard, you know, do what you have to do. But um, so also within that, um, I also offer youth programming as well. And it's because like I said, I wish I had known all of this early on. If I had known so much of what I now know when I was younger, oh, light years, you know, it'd be light years of like what I would have been able to accomplish. You get what I'm saying? So working with the youth has been an amazing thing. <sighs> Shout out to True, my youth mentor who also works with me at Fuel Your Fire Music Academy. She's a musician as well. When I tell y'all that working with these babies have been so amazing it's just been so amazing right and the why it's amazing is because uh not me getting emotional <laughs> why it's amazing is because um that's what i'm saying i'll be crying and everyday recording y'all like oh my god it's amazing because like i said i still remember all those moments where you know where i started and so being able to be the person to share these moments and these memories with these kids, like, that's beautiful. They're going to look back and they're always going to be like, oh, yeah, Miss Kaylee, you know, Miss Crossfire, help me do this. And this, that's going to be, a, they're not going to have the experience that I had to have with the shady man who ran off with the money. <laughs> like, they're not going to have that experience. So, you know, um, so in working with the, in working with the babies, um, I have also attracted the attention of Milwaukee County. Um, so crazy how, like I said, it's all connected, right? What ended up occurring was I did a podcast and on that podcast, you know, I'm just being interviewed for, you know, Kaylee the musician, but within doing so, the same young woman who um, had me on her podcast actually works for Milwaukee County. So when she seen that I was actually working with youth, network connections you know building relationships with people right like she ended up referring me to her uh you know her management i had a meeting with you know uh lynn of milwaukee county um children youth and family services and told her you know what i was doing with the program and what you know about everything and she just was in awe she loved it and from there you know i'm going on my third year to be my third year in january that i'll be renewing my contract with um Milwaukee County's, uh, you know, Children, Youth, and Family Services. So that's amazing. Just working with, you know, the youth and they need these platforms. These babies need these outlets, right? Like if they're not doing something productive that they love to do, the nine times out of 10, they're going to be getting into something that they shouldn't be getting into, right? Like I said, music has really saved me from making a lot of poor choices and decisions I could have made. And I'm not doing that now. And like, look at the position that I'm now in and, you know, just able to kind of like break the cycle in a sense, you know, so that is amazing. I'm, I'm just like super happy, you know, about that opportunity that I was able to get with them. Um, and so I also just want to talk about um, something else as well. I did have some meetings. I'm super excited about this. I don't know, y'all, I'm just so happy because, <laughs> you know, I'm just, a, I'm just, I'm just a girl from Milwaukee who's trying to make a difference, like, you know? <laughs> so uh, most recently I um, had a meeting with uh, Milwaukee Rec Department. Uh, so they're considering implementing Feeling Your Fire Music Academy in the high schools. So that is something that I'm also working out right now. So just, uh, just expanding and growing and, you know, just continuing to do the needed things for the community. It's just like what I'm about. So. Um, what I could say what's coming for Feeling Your Fire Academy is I want to be able to implement more youth showcases because like I said, that's where it all started for me. So I definitely want to do that around a second time and just, just way better, right? Um, and I also will be dropping a ebook. That is something I plan on doing for uh, 2023 as well. It's amazing that I'm able to assist musicians here but I want to be able to reach so many other people, right? There's so many other younger musicians who are getting started, who don't know about the music business, don't know about what entities to, um, you know, register with in order to get royalties and things like that. Um, 
you know, there's just so many, you know, there's just so many things that people could really learn. And if I could just share that knowledge, I feel like the best way to do that to the masses is to create a, a digital ebook. So that's something that'll be coming soon. Um, and of course, music. <laughs> music is on uh, the schedule for 2023 as well. So that's also going to be coming. Um, yeah. So a few things that I do want to mention um, is find a mentor. You know, just find a mentor in whatever field that you're going into, whatever business venture you're going into. Mentors are something that is definitely needed 100%. Um, like I said, I wish I had one early on, but it's okay because I got one now. You know, I definitely have someone who I, you know, seek out when it comes to business advice and things like that, other ways to expand. Um, it's, it's, um, it's super important. So get you a mentor. Don't be, don't be scared to get some knowledge. You can gain those 10,000 hours from a professional, apply them to yourself and really exceed and excel. So you ain't got to bump your head as much. <laughs> okay. Um, now I just want to get into like a few things that, I'm sorry, y'all, you know, I got some little notes for y'all down here. Um, I want to get into a few things that I wish I would have known or learned early on when starting my businesses. Um, I'm sorry, I seen a few questions. Should I should I answer some of those? Totally, hey, totally up to you. Um, with, I, whichever I mean, I, you I prefer. Can't. I, I don't, you know, I want to answer them. I guess as they're coming through, that's fine with me. If you guys okay, see, yeah. I thought I seen some pop on the screen. I definitely did. Um, Jill. There was just some positive comments towards you. And then Daryl Ann had a question that I think relates to what you're talking about right now, actually. Oh, okay. She asked, uh, have you ever had a manager? When, if ever, do you recommend an artist finding a manager? And how does one begin that search? So did I ever have a manager? Um, not formally. I've never formally had a manager. However, I do have someone that I trust. So my best friend, Morgan Hawkins, she has her... Um, her master's in business. So that's someone who, if I need someone to fill in for certain aspects of management, uh, we will kind of collaborate on things and handle, you know, particular business, you know, as needed. So I do have someone in the pocket for that. When will I say that musicians need management? I feel like if you're really starting to do things that you feel are bigger than you can handle, I feel like then it's time for you to get a manager. Um, and what I'm talking about, I'm talking about like you out here signing big buck deals. You get what I'm saying? Like things like that, right? But it, like I said, then it's also depending on when you feel in your journey, you need it. Cause maybe, you know, the organization is too much for you and you don't want to handle like the day-to-day -day and things like that, right? Like you don't want to handle the, the music business administration or, or whatever the case is then I feel like seek one out when you feel like you need it most. If you don't feel like that's something you want to deal with, then do it, right? Um, for me, I've always been that person to always recommend that musicians start and learn as much as possible on your own. You, you know what I mean? Like you want to learn about the industry that you're in as much as possible. And then also, you know, get that manager as you need it because you want to know how to handle the business too, you know? So I hope that answered your question. Was there another part to that? No, I think you covered it. Okay, cool. All righty. So, all right. So let's talk about things that I wish I would have known earlier when launching my businesses or things. Like I basically just said, um, getting organized. <laughs> I think I just kind of touched bases on that. Getting organized as much as possible with things. Um, when it comes to your business, uh, definitely get an accountant utilizing QuickBooks for business, just so you can stay organized with, you know, every aspect of your, you know, your income and the, the your expenses and you tracking everything, you know, so when taxes come around, you ain't looking all crazy, like, oh my God, what's this? And handing your, your tax preparer receipts, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So trying to just get organized as much as possible. Um, there's something called direct mail by the United States Postal Service. I wish I would have known about this sooner. I mean, I know, I, obviously I know about it now, but um, so we all get mail, right? We all get flyers and brochures and things in the mail. Well, you know, that is available to businesses as well. So if you are setting up shop in a new location and you want to get 
you know, your business out there to the residents in the neighborhood. I know, for instance, because um, I, I didn't mention, but I also own a beauty business. So uh, with Fueling Your Fire Music Academy, as well as my uh, beauty business, when I was branding the areas, I sent out those mailers, you know, to the residents or businesses or whomever, you know, just to attract those clients and things like that. And it's definitely been something beneficial that has worked for me. Um, also looking for different pitch competitions. That's something that I would recommend um, business owners to take advantage of as well. Um, you're basically pitching your business to like a panel of people who will then, you know, select to give you guys funds or resources to apply towards your business as well. So I would definitely recommend looking into different pitch competitions. Um, take advantage of grants, same thing. There are a lot of grants out here for business owners. So definitely try to do your research on, you know, the ones that are locally or even national grants and things like that. Definitely make sure y'all take advantage of it because it's out there for us, you know. Um, I have tuned into Verizon. Verizon has something that they do with basically like educational classes for businesses. I literally love free game, y'all. One thing about me is I'm going to get some free game. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So I have kind of tuned in and I have subscribed to a lot of these people too. Make sure y'all subscribe to their um, email lists and things. And then that way y'all can stay up to date when people are, um, you know, having those grant opportunities and pitch contests and, um, you know, those free business courses and things. I really utilize um, Verizon to learn a lot about things that I want to do. So now I do know that I want to go ahead and make sure that I get my uh, certificate for being a, you know, a Black woman-owned business and things like that. So um, definitely have its advantages. Definitely learned a lot from tuning into those courses. Um, networking. Again, networking is very, very important. There are so many events that go on in the city for like, small business owners. Y'all take advantage of those because I've met a lot of cool people at those events and built a lot of great relationships. And, you know, as I was just telling you guys, like, these are people who genuinely, you know, support what I'm doing and look out for me, you know, in different ways. So I would definitely uh, utilize that. Something that I did early on too, that I feel like you can really do this at any time, pop-up events. I love pop-up events. And there's a reason I like pop-up events. Um, obviously, if you have like physical merchandise or physical products or things like that, it's just another way of, you know, kind of putting yourself out there in front of the people. So I definitely, I didn't even tell y'all, I, <laughs> I be having a lot of businesses, y'all. Now, I ain't gonna say all the workouts, <laughs> but I be having a lot of ideas. So I had a clothing boutique probably like two years ago. And I used to love doing my pop-up shops for my clothing boutique, you know, it was super dope. So I definitely took advantage of that. I had my physical products out and, you know, did that. But something I also utilized from that is emails. So something intriguing that I did just to get more emails was, you know, gave the client, I mean, the potential customers kind of like a free, they had to enter in a drawing. And in order to enter in, into the drawing, they had to leave their email. Well, now I have their email to do email marketing later on. So that was something dope, you know, dope that I was able to kind of like utilize. Um, something that I most recently found out about that I actually just attended was um, the Black Business Expo through the Wisconsin Black Chambers of Commerce here. I was like, how come I didn't know about this? <laughs> like, I'm like, why didn't I tune in with them? When I tell y'all, just tune in with them. The events are super amazing. They're always throwing them. They have so many resources. Something that I'm trying to do next year is purchase a home. So they had workshops on home, um, home buying. They had um, business credit resources and, you know, so much, you guys, uh, grant opportunities and things like that. So I would just highly recommend kind of like tuning in with them as well. Um Something that I also took advantage of was free legal resources, you guys. Y'all can get free legal resources if you guys are trying to start like your LLC or a nonprofit. Uh, free, they have free legal uh, resources through Marquette University. I actually did set up a, probably like two different calls with them, you know, to just to learn about nonprofits and things like that. Um, and also at UWM as well, I did the same thing with them. So yeah, definitely. There's a lot of resources out here, you guys. So y'all just got to do y'all research, tune in and just get some knowledge, get some free game. So I feel like in a nutshell, I think that pretty much wraps it up for kind of like the beginning and, you know, the end of my journey thus far. But yeah.
Y'all let me know if y'all have any additional questions or anything. I'll definitely yeah, so another, be happy. Uh, so another question pop up for you. Uh, Lisa okay. asked, where can I find more information on pitch competitions? So pitch competitions, honestly, I would just go online and Google them. I would look up pitch competitions in um, Milwaukee, pitch competitions in Wisconsin. Um, you just have to, y'all, Google is going to be our best friend. So I would definitely just kind of like look into that. Just, just Google it. You're going to find a lot of information. All right, cool. Anybody else have any other questions? Well, if no one has any questions, I would like to thank you all for coming. You know, y'all could have been anywhere in the world, but y'all chose to come here and stop in and chat with me and listen to my story. So I just want to encourage you all to keep pursuing, keep moving forward. Do not give up on yourself. It's going to be hard. There's going to be struggles that you're going to have to overcome, but just stay dedicated, y'all. Stay dedicated and committed. And it's okay. It's okay if y'all have like a lot of things going on and y'all need that healthy mental health break. That is okay because I definitely take them too. <laughs> so <laughs> take care of yourself and thank you guys for coming. All right. So I'm going to give a little outro and also a big thank you to Miss Kaylee Crossfire. Thank you so much for sharing thank your you. story with us. Absolutely. Your, your journey was super interesting and <laughs> I'm just so, so happy to have you know, have you presenting today. You were yeah. phenomenal. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I can't wait to have you come back. Absolutely. Uh, so. <laughs> Which business you want me to talk about? Not <laughs> oh, all of them. <laughs> no, and, and I really, uh, really appreciate your candor and your honesty. And uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you very, very much. And yeah. to all of you who have come and uh, joined us tonight, thank you as well. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that MPL does offer a lot of business related um, services and free resources. Um, you know, as Kaylee mentioned, um, get yourself these grants. Um, we do have book a business librarian where you can get assistance and finding materials and uh, demographic consumer information. Um, and, you know, as Kaylee also mentioned, um, you know, getting your your brand out there, getting your name out there, um, finding, you know, community areas where you can do your best business. Right. Um, you can definitely check out our business research webpage on mpl.org. It'll be under research and there's business resources listed there, um, numbers to make appointments to come and see us. And uh, I just hope you'll keep up with all our, all of our stuff on social media and um, we'll see you guys again in 2023. Bye, you guys. Bye. Thank you, Thank you so much. All righty. Y'all have a good night. Thank you guys so much. Good night. Be safe. All righty. You too. Bye-bye.